I didn't know how I was supposed to sit on the bar stool without the bar. So Musafa stood in front of it and I and took comfort. So I thought I'd stand behind it. My life is actually, much like Muzaffa said, a journey. But within the journey, there's continuous travels because uh, Francis Bagger and I, we restored 32 properties uh, in 18 states. So we were always traveling up and down. And uh, one is, has to be passion to travel. It's always difficult to choose one story out of so many. But I thought of one which is uh, from Uttarakhand. I have a, a summer house where I write books in a place called Ramgarh in Kumau, from where comes uh, Namita Gokhale, who was originally Namita Pant, the, the writer who wrote Paro and, and many other books. And the, uh, she founded the Jaipur Literary Festival. She's a close friend. So she lived in a house which belonged to her sister. So she called me one day and said, uh, I'm going to take you to a temple because I want to go and do some puja. Now, that's not a good start with me because I'm, I'm not somebody who really believes in God in that sense. So I said, well, I'd come for the journey, but uh, you do the puja. So she said, fine. Because I went to Kailash Mansarovar and I walked 400 kilometers. I did it all on foot, but I went for the mountains because the cosmos is eventually the God. And if we are to believe in a God today, I think it's Internet, that would make a better God because it has no color, no boundary, and it unites people rather than divides people. Anyway, so we set out on this journey, and she said, um, can we take your car and your, and your driver? So I said, but of course we can, because he was sitting idle, doing nothing. So we set out from Ramgar to Jageshwar, where there is an, an amazing temple. It's a thousand-year-old temple, they say, and uh, the legend of the worship of the Shiva Linga originates from there because that is where Shiva's Linga was apparently cut off. And uh, so there is no um, deity in the temple, it's just a flat piece of stone and um, people worship that. And the story is interesting because Shiva in the Shiv Puran, they say, was a handsome young man with uh, what shall I say, a flattering phallus, and he roamed naked, begging for alms in a forest. And it's the Saptrishi's wives who he went to ask uh, money from. And uh, the story is very complicated, but uh, when the Rishis came back, they said that their wives had looked at Shiva with lust, so they kicked them out of the house. That's, that, that's a very, very complicated story. So we are going to this temple, and we go there and I make photographs and Namita Gokhale does her puja and, and meets the pandits. And then we have lunch and we are driving back. So she says to me, do you know, actually I don't know how many hotels you've got, where have you got, give me a card of yours. I, mean, I know her quite well, but she said, you know, the card has a map and all this. So I said, oh, where's my card? So I'd left my bag in the restaurant where we had lunch. And we had already driven one hour in the mountains, you know, circling the mountains. And I was feeling sleepy uh, after lunch because I wake up at unearthly hours. So I said, why don't you go and get the bag and I'll just get off here and have a siesta in the pine forest. So she said, what a good idea. But even the, ba uh, the driver had lunch with us in the same restaurant. Why don't we just send him? And you and I can both sit down here. And there were some shafts of sunlight. So we got off. And we sat down and I said to her, you can't sit next to me because I won't be able to have a siesta if, I, you know, if I've got somebody sitting right next to me. So you go and sit there and I will sit here and I will lie here and I put my hat and I, went, I had a little siesta. So as I got up, uh, th there was a board over there which said Paleolithic site. There were some caves and there were some rock paintings within, within the caves of you know, this kind of triangular men with two legs and so on, the primitive art, uh, which we had seen because there was a board there and you, you go through the cave and I'd, we'd come out and then we'd sat down. So just as I got up from my siesta, I see a gentleman coming out of that cave, walking in my direction because I was actually on the, on the place which led out from there. So he said very nicely, he sees this 
white bearded man sitting in a pine forest under a tree. So he said Namaskar in a very Bengali fashion. Uh, he looked Bengali too, so I, I wished him. And he said, uh, he didn't speak Hindi, so he said to me, Ki Karbo or something. And I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm just sitting in the forest, I'm, I'm, I'm resting. What do you do? So this man says, sweetness business. So because, you know, he realized I was I'm not understanding Bengali, so he wanted to say he made Bengali sweets, so, you know. So he said, sweetness business. I said, where? So he said, in, in Kolkata, in this place, that place. And then he wished me, because I must have looked like a Babaji sitting in a forest. And, and he, he walked off in that path where Namita was sitting further on and to the road. A few seconds later, arrived another man from the same cave. And he looked like his photocopy, so there was no guessing that he was his brother. And he walked up to me and he also said, Namaskar. And he wished me, reverently, because of age, I suppose. And um, he said the same thing. He said, what do you do? So I said, I read people's palms. So he was very interested because the Indian is so gullible, he's always wanting to be told what's going to happen to them and so on. So immediately he gets on his knees and he presents me his hand. And he was wearing a ring in each of the fingers and in the thumb. So I was only entertaining myself. So I said, no, no, I don't read the palm like this. I read it like this. So he said, OK. So he, now he, has hand, he gives me his palm with all these rings. So I, say, I look at the rings and I say, Mishti, Doi, Rasha, Gulla, Sandesh, Cham, Cham. So that man is completely bewildered. So he steps back, he lies down flat on the grass and dun does Dandavat Pranam because he's saying, wow, this man knows all about me, you know. So, and Namita is sitting there and saying, what's happening, you know. So then he came and said to me, tell me, tell me more. So I said, now what should I invent, you know. I said, you're going to have a second shop, but you must stop mixing and adulterating your sweets. So he said, sorry, sorry, sorry. He said, from today I will never do it again, and so on. You know, so. And this went on. And then he said, tell me more. I said, no, I only tell one thing in one day. You can come back later if you want. So then he got up, and he's going like this, you know. And Namita sitting there saying, what's this Aman done to this man, you know. And, and he left, and on the road there were some people standing, so he was talking to them, and he was saying, this man is, you know, knows the future of the whole world, and so on. So Namita then came running to me, and he says, what did you do? So I tell her the story, so she says, how extraordinary, what a wonderful place, what are we doing in Delhi, why don't we just live here? The Indian is such a gullible person, that we could just set up an ashram here, they'll all be bringing food for us, and we'll live it up and have great fun, you know. So actually, if you travel with an open mind in India, wherever you go, and if you mean no harm to people, I think you're very well received. And depending on the vibrations that you create with people, you also get the same, if you're nice to people. So my motto in life, which I'd like to share with you, is actually a, a very simple little couplet which says, Meri zindagi ek musalsil safar hai, jo manzil pe pahunche to manzil badha de. So there is no one destination. You're not that I, if I get to Lucknow, I would have reached what I want to because every, every journey is long and we don't know when is the last step which we will climb and it won't be there and we'll be out of the world. So you should take life as a journey and travel, contribute, read, share, so that the great places become even greater. And if there's bad tourism, if people are not nice, there's also uh, good vibrations and bi bad vibrations, so that there is an incentive for countries, for destinations, and for pe people to do better in their destinations. Thank you.